the 2024 Education Innovation Showcase. Clap it up! Yeah. My name is Tiffany Taylor and I have the pleasure of serving as a partner and Chief People and Impact Officer at GSV. And my name is Julia Heiser and I'm the Vice President of Content and Community at ASU GSV. Tiffany and I are so excited about this event being back at ASU GSV for a second year in a row. We had even more entries than last year with innovations shared from across the country and the world, including five international entries. 35 first round judges from 12 partner organizations judged and evaluated our entries on key factors, such as the issue they were solving, the use of innovative technology, the overall impact, the insights gained and shared, and the inclusion of diverse perspectives. We know that all innovations are critical because they are impacting our students every single day. The ones chosen today were selected by many former educators with the lens of what is most meaningful for students in classrooms today. What an event, we can't wait to get started. Yes, so today we'll have the opportunity to meet and celebrate all 10 finalists across the idea and the impact categories. Then we'll hear live pitches from the top two in each category. While our judges deliberate, we'll have an exciting interview with Daryl DMC McDaniels and Terry Gray, yes. <laughs> Terry is our second place winner from last year. And after the interview, we're gonna reveal our winners. Just as a reminder, the top place prize in the idea category will walk away with $5,000 cash, plus a $5,000 grant and implementation support from Educating All Learners Alliance. The impact category winner will walk away with $20,000 in cash, and both winners will receive a design sprint with Sharon Sand Education, 30 hours of consulting with the League of Innovative Schools, training on the Digital Promise Inclusive Innovation Framework, compliment, I gotta take a breath, complimentary <laughs> registration and accommodation to any League of Innovative Schools convening or event, consultation and training on the LEAP Learning Framework, and complimentary registration to the ASU GSV Summit in 2025. We, yes, I know. <laughs> We are so excited about all these incredible prizes, so thank you again to our amazing partners who have been so generous in providing this prize package to our winners. Our partners are also here to help us judge, so judges, when I call your name, please stand to be recognized. Let's give a warm welcome to Elon Samoa, co-founder of Transcend Education. <laughs> Dr. Baron Davis, Senior Advisor of Digital Promise. <laughs> Tria Hutchins, Project Director of the Educating All Learners Alliance. <laughs> and Scott Fraunheim, CEO of Leap Innovations. And as I already shared, we have a very special guest. Daryl DMC McDaniels. Help me give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Wonderful, now let's get started. I would like to invite our top five in the idea category to the stage. All right, so our top five in the idea category have been asked to do a brief introduction of who they are and the project that they are representing. So we are gonna start with Arcadia Unified School District. Thank you. My name is Greg Azanian. I'm the Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer for the Arcadia Unified School District. We are a mid-sized school district in uh, Southern California, public schools, TK through 12. One of the biggest challenges we are facing is the amount of work that classroom teachers have to do beyond teaching and student engagement. In fact, a recent survey by Education Week indicates that teachers are only spending 46% of their time with students. The rest is administrative work, paperwork, lesson planning, and it goes on and on. When we spoke with our teachers and asked them, what can we do to help? They said, if only there was a way to access all of our district information just by asking. 
we couldn't find any one person who knew all that in our district, so we decided to build an AI uh, chat bot. That bot was trained internally on our data and our resources and our coaching resources uh, to get them connected to whatever they needed. By engaging with our teachers and our community, we're able to provide that information directly to them through a chat interface that they already have access to. I'm Dr. Jerry Gillespie with Innovate Academy. And I'm Chris Bishop with Purdue University. Uh, Deloitte and the Manufacturing Institute recently released a study that estimated that the manufacturing industry is going to add 4 million new job openings in the next 10 years. The fear is that half of those 2 million jobs are going to go unfilled because we are not developing a future workforce with the skills necessary for Industry 4.0. This can't continue. We have to understand the great opportunity that we have for teachers and especially for students. We've developed a program for students and educators about solving this problem. We want to share this partnership with Purdue University and Innovate Academy using guardrails, a safe COVID, I mean, sorry, COPA certified education platform and game-based learning with Minecraft education. We are developing skills in communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. We are honored to share this idea with you, but we're more excited about the opportunity to share impact next year up here about this project. This is Industry 4.0 confronting the digital divide head on. Sorry, we were supposed to stand over there, messing up already. <laughs> uh, okay, we are Launch Expeditionary Learning Charter School, uh, and we are building an experiential learning campus called Runway Green. But it's not just any campus. Uh, because in New York City, there exists a national park on an old abandoned airfield. And that land happens to be bigger than Central Park. Through a public-private partnership with the National Park Service and city and state and federal elected officials and half a dozen nonprofit partners, we're building an education ecosystem that will support 50,000 New York City students every single year in tackling the two great issues of our time, sustainability and equity. And not only that, but students will be able to engage in career-connected learning that will put them on pathways to careers of the future and family-sustaining wages. The design of the campus and the design of the program is being led by a community design team of students and of families and of community members. We believe this is one model of what racially sustainable and equitable education can look like. Thank you. Hello, my name is Allison Nelson. I'm the CEO for Making Waves Academy. My name is John. I'm a former college and career counselor. The program that I led was ranked number two in the San Francisco Bay Area and among the top in California. John and I are here representing Making Waves. Uh, a few years ago, John came to me with uh, an idea with lots of potential. What if there was a way to enable more people to benefit from the personalized coaching we provide to our students using an AI-powered tool? Making Waves has built an AI co-pilot. It provides education to employment coaching for young people through text. Last December, I met a young person named Samantha. Before she met Making Waves, no one had ever had a conversation with her about her education or her career plans. Why should she or any young person navigate their future alone? We've built the tool that can help Samantha along with 100,000 others in the Bay Area and hundreds of thousands across the nation. We are making waves. Talent Together represents the power of collaboration and innovation at scale. Michigan has one of the largest teacher shortages in the country, impacting our urban, suburban, and rural communities across our state. As a superintendent in Michigan, it became clear that addressing our challenges required collaboration. So we partnered with fellow superintendents statewide and a leading nonprofit organization to launch Talent Together. This in initiative focuses on an overlooked source of potential educators, school employees like paraprofessionals who are invested in their communities yet encounter obstacles to becoming teachers. 
18 months later, our results are transformational. We've received over 4,200 applications. Beginning this fall, we will have over 1,500 candidates enrolled in teacher preparation programs. Those candidates work in over 350 school districts and charters across the state. Together, we're rebuilding Michigan's teacher pipeline and changing the economic mobility of thousands of Michiganders. All right, thank you so much. One, it's not lost on us. All you do for your students, for your educators, for your communities, and so we are so very grateful that you are leading with innovation top of mind. So our judges had the opportunity to review all of the materials. They did a little bit of deliberation and they selected the top two in this category. If I say your name, I'm gonna ask you to step to the front. And if I don't say your name, if you could step off the stage at this time and return to your seats. No, why y'all laughing? Come on. <laughs> you all are great, but that's the process, okay? So the, the top, two leaders in this category. First, Arcadia Unified School District. Please step forward. <laughs> the next is Making Waves. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for all of your hard work. Okay, now that we have our top two, I'm gonna ask Arcadia to step forward. You have three minutes to rock it out with your pitch and then make a waves. You can stay on the stage and if you could take a one step back and the time will start when you do. I know that I only have three minutes to speak with you, but I wanna take that time to start off by asking you to do something. I want to set aside whatever stresses or worries or things going on on your calendar, those LinkedIn alerts, and set that aside for a moment. I want to ask you to remember. Remember a time in your life where a teacher, a coach, or a mentor saw you. I don't mean just in passing, but they saw who you were, your hopes, your dreams, and your fears. And I want you to take about 10 seconds right now to do that. I'll go ahead and time it. I hope you could think of someone. I certainly could as I thought about it. Um, I ask you to think of this for two reasons. One, these are sacred moments. They're the ones who create who we are. They send us on our life journey. And second, I bring it up because unfortunately, those types of moments are at risk. The more we ask teachers to do, the more that's on their plate, those take away from those sacred moments of interaction and being seen. And that's why we took on this idea of an AI assistant for teachers. Whatever they need, we want to give them that information. So I'll talk a little bit about the technology that allowed us to do this and where uh, we've gone and where we're going. Uh, we have a really solid technology department and coders in our district. And when we started to see some of this AI technology growing, uh, we did what I think any good hacker would do and email OpenAI. And we said, hey, we heard about this GPT-3 uh, thing. Can we get access to it? And they said yes. And we were able to experiment with that. Uh, we loaded all sorts of data into our AI assistant. I'm going to share with you a few examples of what that looks like. We had a teacher who was really struggling with a student uh, in terms of fractions. How do I teach this? We loaded uh, all of our best practices into the system and they were able to ask that. Uh, we also asked um, our facilities and maintenance department and our school offices, uh, if you could ask an AI bot anything, what would it be? And they looked at each other and they said, if it could help us with the geyser. And of course we asked, what's a geyser? It turns out that the geyser was a 30-foot stream of water that happened when a water pipe broke at our school district. There are a lot of distractions that can happen in school districts. I guarantee you that a 30-foot uh, geyser of water is one of those things. Uh, we've taken all sorts of information and prepared it to where any of our teachers can ask it any of uh, that type of question. Uh, I want to talk about some of the insights that we've learned. Uh, one thing that we've learned is when we train it on our values, it gives really good answers. It gives safe answers. It gives good answers. We're continuing to tune it, but if I ask it, how can I share in a way that tells us to collaborate, which is one of our values, it's gonna tell us how to do that. Another insight is that when people work together in creating this type of technology, they have more ownership and they're willing to engage around it. Finally, I wanna talk about inclusion. When we uh, designed it, we included people from across the district, uh, voices uh, to be included in the responses. People own that and their voices will live on in our bot. 
it's made a powerful and profound district, uh, difference in our district. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg and Arcadia. We're going to ask that you take a step back and making waves, you can come and take a step forward and your three minutes will start when you're ready. John started with a simple concept. How can we help students at our school find success and pursue their dreams? For our students, the challenge was, how do I get started? John and his team would then have one-on-one -on -one conversations with students, coaching them through a multi-step process. If students had questions, they could ask John or members of the team for help. These personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations have been critical in helping our students find post-secondary success. John then began to ask himself, what can I do to enable more people to have access to these critical coaching conversations? When Gen Z teens are asked a simple question, the answer is shocking. When they're asked, when you think about your future, do you feel lost? 87% say yes. We have one job to bring that number down. To get coaching for Making Waves, all someone has to do is visit our website. After they sign up, we'll send a welcome text within seconds. We'll continue proactively texting while answering any questions that may come up. So what young people get is information to help make decisions about their future. So, Imagine that you are in high school, and one day you text Making Waves, what's the name of the job where you draw people's blood? Immediately, Making Waves will remember you're interested in phlebotomy. Here's where the magic really happens. A few days later, Making Waves will text you out of the blue and suggest affordable phlebotomy programs you've never heard of to help you finish your program. You'll get tips to overcome self-doubt and effective study skills. To help you land a great job, you'll get ideas to build your network and uh, to get practical experience. It feels like texting a mentor that gives you what you need without making you ask. What makes Making Waves different is our technology drives the conversation. So young people no longer need to spend hours thinking about what to ask next. They just start the chat and let Making Waves lead the way. Our technology is adaptive. So the more someone texts, the more relevant Making Waves becomes. With that data, we're positioned to build world-class machine learning models that continue to drive down our cost per person, and our security is best in class. We've put together an outstanding team. Our researchers are backed by Gates and Chan Zuckerberg. Our advisors are giants in ed tech and AI. And our senior leadership team is second to none. Something amazing happened. We started this with an idea at our school, just one school. Now we're in over 100 schools, and thousands of young people are using Making Waves. Our product is direct to consumer, so anyone can use it today for free. We see a large addressable market with just with 100,000 in the Bay Area alone. We're asking for deliberate partnership to make this happen. If you're a school or a district leader, please come by and say hello. We'd love to introduce Making Waves to your community. After this event, we'll be standing just outside that door over there. Please say hello. Together, we can help young people like, uh, like Samantha navigate their future. We are Making Waves. All right, thank you so much to our idea top two. Uh, congratulations again. You can actually go ahead and return to your seats um, now because our judges were listening and taking notes as you shared, but we're not quite ready to reveal the winner just yet. Next, we're going to hear from our finalists in the impact category. So if you are in the top five for impact, please join us on the stage. So just as before, we'll ask each of you to do a brief introduction of who you are and what your project is. And we're going to go ahead and start with the Illinois Virtual Schools and Academy. If you could all just take one step forward so you are in the light. Perfect. All right. So um, you'll have your one minute, and you can start when you're ready. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Melissa Lungard. I'm the Executive Director of Illinois Virtual Schools and Academy. We're excited to share our idea with you, our impact idea. Illinois Virtual Schools and Academy exists to serve all students in Illinois through our supplemental program, our teacher shortage solutions, and our full-time virtual academy. Imagine all students have access to Excuse me. Imagine all students have access to an education path that's as unique as their fingerprint. Imagine that all students have access to flexible courses with 24-7 virtual tutoring and academic support. I'm Michael Carner, and the last thing is all of our districts get reimbursed through our uh, program, and on top of that, we have 24-7 support for tutoring, uh, counseling, and care navigation. Students who grow up in low-income communities don't lack character, they lack cash. What becomes possible for high school age students when they receive $50 a week to spend as they see fit for a school year? Hello, my name is Talia Livne. I'm joined here by Sandra Yokely on behalf of Rooted School. In 2020, at the height of the pandemic, we launched the $50 study, a direct cash transfer research program in which participating students receive $50 a week unconditionally for 40 weeks. As we wrap up a two-year randomized controlled trial, the results are really promising. Students who receive the cash transfers are experiencing increased growth in reading levels and GPA. They're missing fewer days of school. They're taking advantage of new opportunities, and they're supporting their families and communities. Take Peyton, for example, who used her cash transfers to apply to more colleges during her senior year. Burnell, who started his own t-shirt printing business and Quasi, who proudly saved up to buy his six-year-old brother a birthday present. We're honored to be on a stage with so many amazing innovators, and thank you for having us. Good evening. I'm Brittany Branch, Spark Lab leader for Mount Airy City Schools in North Carolina. Spark NC ignites a passion in our students to discover high-tech fields like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and software development. There are three things I want you to remember about Spark NC. Student choice. Students choose what, where, and how they learn. Business engagement. We connect our students and business partners through team-based internships, demo days, and hackathons. Real-world projects. Our learning experiences require students to dig deep and use their networks to design real solutions to real problems. Too few learners are aware of the high-tech fields that will dominate the future job market, and even fewer see pathways for themselves into those careers. At Spark NC, we give our students the competitive edge on their way to high-wage careers in a tech-powered economy. <laughs> My name is Dr. Matthew Tyson. I'm the proud principal and CEO of Tapestry Public Charter School. Growing up, I was the oldest of four neurodivergent boys, and I watched how difficult it was to find a school system that worked for us. That is where Tapestry Public Charter School came into the picture. Tapestry is a school where half of the population is neurotypical and half of the population has special needs, but everybody learns together. We were founded by parents of children on the spectrum who wanted their kids to have an authentically inclusive learning environment. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward 10 years, and we are the Georgia Charter School of the Year. We have more than 400 people on our wait list, and we are achieving our goals. We are proving that through individualized learning and the proper utilization of AI technology, we can achieve results that no one ever has before. Our goal is to provide equal access to the future for everyone, and our model proves that this is possible. This award would allow us to create more tapestries and help districts to become more innovative. And because the world is a funny thing, I got started in special ed about 20 years ago, and now I have a little three-year-old and a six-year-old, one of them has an IEP and the other one doesn't. And I don't want to live in a world where they have to live in different, learn in different classrooms because of a label that society puts on them. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Mike Rubin. I'm the proud principal of Uxbridge High School in Uxbridge, Massachusetts. Our work at UHS is not just about the what, but in redefining the why. Our innovation pathway programs fuse concept development, skill development with content. We answer for our students two age-old questions. The first being, what did you learn today at school? And the second being, why am I doing this? I want you to imagine this student. Most of us in schools have a student like this. Two years ago, she's considering dropping out of school, and she gets transformed into a young professional training the lieutenant governor of our state on how to use mechanical engineering technology to scan and then 3D print a bobblehead of a congressman's head. <laughs> for her and for hundreds of others, this hands-on approach has resulted in lower dropout rates, improved chronic absenteeism, and reduced teacher attrition, all problems that we're dealing with. This world persists through our three-pronged Venn diagram of culture, collaboration, and most importantly, skill development. And where we were once one of just four schools to earn a designation, our tree now has 8,000 students in it in Massachusetts. Thank you very much. All right. Again, thank you so much for all the work that you are doing. It is a, a gift to us to be able to honor you and celebrate you and create an, a platform for you to actually create visibility for the great work that you uh, are leading. So again, these fabulous judges, they reviewed all of your materials. They selected the top two, and I am going to reveal those now. All right. If I call your name, I'm going to ask you to step forward. And if I don't, I'm going to ask you to return to your seats, OK? All right. So the first of the top two. Rooted School. All right. And the next, Spark NC. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now that we have our top two, I'm going to ask that Rooted Schools go first. That three minute clock is going to start when you do. Ken is my teacher voice, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good to see you again. My name is Talia Livdang. And I'm Sandra Yokley. We are here from Rooted School to share a transformative initiative born out of our school's mission. In 2017, Rooted School was founded and set out to prove a new possible in education. At Rooted School, we seek to equip students with the tools and skills they need so that they can pursue their own pathways to financial freedom. We developed a learning model that resulted in students earning industry-based credentials while they went to high school. We offered dual enrollment opportunities, and we saw really exciting su successes in our early years. Then the COVID-19 pandemic hit, and like many schools and school systems, our students not only struggled academically, but the acute challenges of living in low-income communities were magnified. Enter the $50 study. Launched in 2020 as a direct response to the deep financial needs expressed by students, this first-of-its-kind program gave $50 weekly cash transfers, totaling $2,000, no strings attached, to 10 high schoolers in New Orleans. Our aim has been to better understand the academic and personal impacts of direct cash transfers, and so we partnered with researchers at the universities of Tennessee and Pennsylvania to develop these studies as randomized controlled trials. In 2022, we expanded the study to include 82 students, and this year, 91 students enrolled in the study in both New Orleans and Indianapolis. Some may ask, why cash transfers? We believe that many of the obstacles our students face aren't due to lack of effort or resources in the classroom, but rather the daily struggles of living, living in poverty that consume students' energy and focus. Many of the students Rooted Serves experience food insecurity, juggle part-time jobs, and support their families by providing childcare and financial support. Balancing all of this can make attending school and focusing on schoolwork exponentially more difficult. Our early research findings are promising. Students in the study not only report increased well-being and decreased financial hardship, but also demonstrate tangible academic growth. They're seeing greater GPA and reading level increases and accruing more credits compared to their peers who are not in the program. They're missing fewer days of school. Our findings further suggest that the impact of these transfers extend far beyond the classroom, and we see that students are able to engage in new opportunities that are deeply aligned to their own values, priorities, hopes, and dreams. They report feelings of agency and empowerment. 
these cash transfers aren't just about keeping the lights on or buying necessities. They're about empowering students to focus on their education, pursue their passions, and seize opportunities they might otherwise miss out on. And what we found is the effects endure even after the transfers end. Peyton, who used her transfers to pay for college applications, is now thriving at Manhattan Marymount College in New York City, while Vernell attributes his success as a T-Mobile manager to the skills he honed as a young entrepreneur starting a t-shirt business. By delving deeper into the impact of cash transfers, we can continue to innovate and create a future for our students where they are empowered to dream big and beyond their immediate circumstance. We believe we're on the precipice of a paradigm shift in education, and we hope that you will join us. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Rooted School. And now, Spark NC, your time will start when you're ready. What would you do if you weren't afraid to fail? Caleb Allen walked the halls of his high school at the start of his senior year. He was resigned to one path he could see in front of him, enroll in trade school and become a welder. He couldn't imagine any other choice. But then he passed a classroom that looked more like the office of a tech company, bright colors, comfortable furniture, high-tech computers. Students were buzzing, working on different things in different corners of the room. Curious, he stepped inside. From there, Caleb was off and running. He came to the Spark Lab during his lunch, independent study period, and during the summer, exploring high-tech fields. It was like shopping in a designer store, trying on outfits he never imagined himself in before. His choice, his pace, without any risk, all for credit. This is how Caleb found a new path, his path, starting this fall as a computer information systems major at North Carolina Wesleyan University. Caleb is off to do great things, and Spark NC has helped him on his way. Spark NC fosters imagination and exploration. Spark creates choice. I'm Senator Lee an education and appropriations uh, chair in the North Carolina Senate, and I'm always looking of ways to redesign our high schools so the students will know the choices that they have. I'm invested in our economy, so we know that after they make that choice that they're gonna have a really good paying job. In 2021, Apple announced they were gonna have their East Coast hub in North Carolina. And what did people say? We're gonna have to recruit people from outside of North Carolina because North Carolina students don't have the skills. And that's when we created Spark NC. We received funding and policy flexibility from our legislature. We organized a, a business uh, advisory committee made up of high tech companies like Cisco, IBM, and Apple. We created an unprecedented policy model for a non-traditional method to educate our students in North Carolina, and it's called Spark NC. You know, when we're trying to solve K-12, uh, when we're trying to solve these K-12 systemic issues that we've got, the, the ability to scale, we don't always need new solutions. We need to have folks that know how to scale. Spark NC served over 1,000 students in its first five months, and in the next couple of years, it's gonna serve all of the students in North Carolina. I'm proud that Apple chose North Carolina to locate, but I'm gonna be even prouder when students can imagine walking on that campus for the first time to have that first job. That's the promise of Spark NC. All right. Thank you so much. All right, you can go back to your seat. Okay, so our judges, our judges were listening, correct? They were listening. So they are gonna take a little bit of time to deliberate. And while they do, I am thrilled to welcome to the stage our special guest, Daryl DMC McDaniels. Daryl is a philanthropist, hip hop pioneer, and author who uses his platform to raise awareness and support for mental health and wellness needs for students, to enrich the lives of children in the foster care system, and to inspire young people to pursue their dreams and achieve their full potential. Daryl is not only the co-founder of the legendary group Run DMC. This, yes, let's, let's pause for that, Just, yes. <laughs> that sold over 40 million albums and changed music history. He is an incredibly powerful voice for creativity, education, resilience, and the transformative power of music. Today, Daryl will be interviewed by our second place winner in last year's showcase, Miss Terry Gray. 
<laughs> Terry has been a principal in New York City schools for nearly 20 years. She has also served as a founding school member in the capacity of teacher, assistant principal, and principal co-designing and implementing innovative school models. She proudly serves as the founding principal of Virtual Innovators Academy, New York City's and New York State's first virtual high school. Terry and Darrell, welcome to the stage. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, Daryl, I'm so excited, so excited to share the stage with you again Thank and you. learn from your expertise and your experiences. Well, you guys are the experts. <laughs> I'm well, an have assistant. A lot to share. I'm like AI. <laughs> I'm here to help y'all. <laughs> so I have a, a few questions for us to just get started, and I'm hoping, you know, maybe at the end you might want to drop a few bars for us. <laughs> Would we like to hear that, everyone? All right, so um, let's just get started and um, think about all of the amazing presentations we just saw. They were amazing, weren't they amazing? Super. And so um, I would just like to know if you were showcasing a groundbreaking educational innovation, what would your innovation be? What area do you believe that schools need to focus on to improve? I think schools need to um, focus on reading. So if we could figure how to use technology to inject the desire to read. Computers are cool, it's necessary, it's where we're going, but something amazing happens to the individual when they pick up a book and start to read. So I think that's where we need to go with all of this. Thank you. Whether it's, and the reason why I say that is, you know, kids are reluctant nowadays to pick up a textbook and a workbook. And they're always on their phones and stuff like that. But um, I have a comic book company I started. There's, so, there's um, anime and manga and comic books. Comic books for me wasn't just an adventure or an escape, they actually taught me about things. In school, I would learn about science and the sun and the moon and the stars and the rings around Saturn. But Tony Starks, Reed Richards, Professor X, they would take me to those places literally. I would learn about comets and asteroids, but the Fantastic Four and the Silver Surfer would take me there. And not only do you learn education, you learn about things, but with education, we overlook the fact that it allows you to learn about yourself. I think that's so accurate. Um, and you mentioned superheroes. And so I would like to know, um, what unique superpower would you possess in the story of your life? And how have you used your superpower to positively impact others? Well, um, I kind of was sitting there in elementary school with my Marvel comic book. And um, Stanley, shout out to Stanley, one of the greatest creators ever who created Marvel. I was sitting there one day and I noticed that, okay, Thor is the son of Odin from Asgard. He has a brother named Loki and he has a hammer. And then I noticed in this world, my name is Daryl. I got a father named Bifred. His father's Odin. My father's Bifred. I got a brother named Alfred. His brother's Loki. And I got a mic. So 40 years ago, from reading and writing and learning, and then imagination, I was able to literally become son of Bifred, brother of Al. Banners my mother and runs my pal. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Daryl's and those burgers are Ronald's. I ran down my family tree, my mother, my father, my brother, and me. So I guess. 
Uh, I guess one of the superpowers I have is the power of creativity, which is a power that we all have. Um, when I was in rehab, um, I've been sober for 21 years now. <laughs> we learned that the, um, a lot of the addictions, um, are the, the guy that did the LSD experiments in the 60s <laughs> with all the LSD, he wrote that our addictions is the conscious search for God. And when you think about it, you know, all religions and truths, they're all parallel. We all have a superpower. It's the power of creativity. Albert Einstein, the smartest man in history, he said these words, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Now, he didn't say knowledge wasn't necessary. He said imagination was more powerful than knowledge, but things really manifest and change and, and, and transform when you put knowledge with imagination. And that's what all of you are doing here. AI, you know, I come from the vinyl era. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the fact that you push a button and you can't hold the album cover in your hand, but technology has allowed the DJs, you can literally carry a million records in your pocket now. If it wasn't for technology, these DJs would be spending a lot of money checking their bags with Delta and American Airlines. <laughs> the, the airlines would never complain they broke. So we all have this power, it's the power the whatever, God, Yahweh, Buddha, the great one, the enlightened one, the, the one that's all is, the one that will never end and all, whatever you want to call her, I think God's a woman, because <laughs> my grandmother was God, but we all have that power, and that's what it's about. So for me, it was the power of imagination and creativity. I was watching this show called um, Discovery of Witches. Great show, it was about, the vampires, this is crazy, the vampires, the vampires, werewolves, demons, monsters, all the monsters was tired of being monsters. And there was this prophecy that the vampire guy would meet the witch girl who was the savior. She was the one, like Jesus. She was the one, right? So when they found her, and I tell this story when I speak at high schools and middle schools to the kids. When they found her, a lot of our children have doubts about themselves. Just like all the stuff y'all created to assist them to make their dreams come true. So they found the, the witch girl that was gonna change and there would be no more wars and there would be no more fight and evil would go away. Because the monsters don't wanna be monsters, they was just put in that position, you know? So <laughs> the witch laid the head, yeah, the witch comes down to the girl and says, you're the one. And like all of us, even now as grown ups, oh, not me, I don't have this and that. And it was like, yes, you are, yes, you are. So to make her believe it, they, they said this. Here's your first task to this girl. Light the candle without using a match. So the girl looked at the witch and like, this is I need a book of matches, whatever. And she said, no. So she tried. Then she tried. And she got to like maybe the 25th time, and like a lot of students, she was about to give up. Like me, when me and Run were shopping our record deal, all the great records that you heard, we went to 50 record companies, they all said no. We got a call to go to number 51. Me and Run could have said, Joe, I'll see you later, and this and that, and that. And you say, you know what? What have we got to lose? Went to 51, and we got the record deal. So here I sit today. So the girl tried and tried and tried, and then she said these words. She said, ah, she got frustrated. I can't do it. I don't have magic. And the witch lady, she was a white lady, but she turned black. <laughs> and she said, honey, she said, the magic is in everybody. It's not in the wand. It's not in the, the potions. It's not in the condentations. It's not in the amulets. It's not in the sacred books. It ain't in none of it. And this blew my mind. And I heard this about four years ago, and I'll never forget this. She said, honey, the magic is in the desire to see it done. <laughs> so you can wait and stand and recite, but if you don't believe it's going to happen, so that's what happened with hip hop. And when you look at hip hop, it was art, it was words, it was music, it was sound, it was language. These kids are 
indestructible. It got to the point a young man named Dougie Fresh didn't even have an equipment. So he started doing the music with his mouth and we created beatboxing. So that's a, a, a prime example of the capabilities and abilities that this next generation of students have. Um, should, I, should I beatbox a little bit for you? Huh? Should I beatbox a little bit for you? Yeah, can you? DMC in the place to be. I went to St. John's University and since kindergarten I acquired the knowledge. After 12th grade I went straight to college. I'm the king of rock from Hollis, Queens and I love eating chicken and collard greens. I trust the kill. I love the style. I'm an MC you know who's versatile. I got good credit in your regards. I got my name, not numbers on my credit cards. I go uptown. I come back home with who? Me, myself, and my microphone. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daryl. That was amazing. I appreciate your time. Yes, thank you so much, Daryl and Terry. What an inspirational and fun interview. You can keep that. Because we're, well, we're going to, Daryl, we're going to ask you to remain on stage oh, to help us. Better. Yes, <laughs> to help us get to what we have yeah. been waiting for, oh, which yes. is the announcement of our winners. All right. And so, first up, idea category. You ready? All right, and the winner is? And the winner is? <laughs> making Waves! Idea. Come on up, idea, idea. They're in the back. Talk first, right there. Julia. Oh. All right, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> you got it. Congratulations. All right, and our last winner. Yeah, you can keep it. You can. And we're going to actually send you some money. So that paper is nice, but you really want the, the, the green that's following. We would have gave you a big envelope, but we didn't have one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And for the impact category. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our impact category winner is, drum roll, Spark in <laughs> Do you have uh, Here you go. Here you go. Right there. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us. We are so grateful, not only to each and every finalist, but every single school leader, district leader, educator that applied to be a part of this innovation competition. We also must say thank you to our judges. None of this would have been possible without you. You gave of your time, you gave of your expertise, you tapped into your teams for the last six months to make all of this happen, and we are so very grateful. Thank you to all of you. Yeah. And I must say, thank you to Julia Heiser. She is a rock star in every sense of the word, and I am so grateful to have you as a partner. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the summit, and we look forward to seeing you back next year. Thanks, folks.